joining us this evening. I'm joined by my colleague, um, Caroline, who is one of our senior admissions tutors here at the university uh, for nursing and midwifery. And we're going to be recording this session on preparing for a nursing or midwifery interview. And we will be sharing it afterwards with yourselves. It will be sent to you next Monday. I mean, if you've got any questions, please use the Q&A function. Your mics are disabled this evening. Thank you. Welcome, Caroline. Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to see us. As Natalie said, I'm Caroline Sargis and I'm in charge of nursing and midwifery recruitment here at Middlesex. I am a nurse um, and I'm very, very much involved in the recruitment to our, our professional programme. So um, we're hoping that this webinar will give you some useful tips on getting the most out of your nursing and midwifery interview. A lot of the stuff I'll be talking about is very much about what Middlesex is looking for in our future student nurses and midwives. Um, it may be applicable to other universities as well, but um, please bear in mind that we've, we've written this specifically for us. And as Natalie said, if there's any questions at all, please put them in the chat and we'll either address them as we go along or at the end of the interview. So uh, first slide, please, Natalie. Mm. There we go. There we go. Okay, so what are we going to look at? We're going to look at the most important bit, really, which is what you need to do um, before the interview. So how can you best prepare for your interview? I know you've all got lots of interviews going on at the same time. You've got possibly five different universities you're, you're getting ready for. But you need to make sure that you're in the best possible situation before you come for your interview. And I would suggest that for all your interviews, whichever university you're going to, please make sure you really understand the role of the nurse or the midwife. And that might be that you, you've got a very clear idea in your mind about what they do. That doesn't mean you still can't go ahead and do some further work on looking at not just the day-to-day the -day role, but look at the career progressions as well. Where, where could your career take you? Because that will give you an idea of the types of things we could be looking for. Um, at Middlesex for nursing and midwifery, we invite you to a panel interview, which means that there'll be a member of the academic staff. We may have a service user there to talk to you as well. And we may have one of our clinicians from our partnership trust. So they're the people that you'll be talking to and they're the people that will be asking you questions. So one of the things that uh, it's often worth thinking about is highlighting your transferable skills and the experience that you have and, and bringing those in, into your, your responses. And also, obviously, there's going to be some useful information here. The picture we've got there at the moment was our, there, there are clinical skills staff and they were really involved in the COVID vaccination problem across London. So they not only did they deliver the vaccinations, they also trained other staff to, to vaccinate the public. So I'm very proud of, of the work that we did on that. So we thought we'd show you a picture of them in action. Next, please. So this is, for those of you who haven't been able to see it yet, this is what's called Stonex. And at Middlesex University, this is our brand new 20 million pound state-of-the-art skills centre. And when we're talking about the research that you need to do before you consider your applications is looking at the facilities that the university offers you, looking at the geography. So where are the placements? And we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit, because um, obviously travel is, is a really important thing. But what experience is the university going to offer you? And uh, we are very excited about our augmented reality and virtual reality skills. You can see in the beds there, there are sim dummies and we can make them do all sorts of amazing and interesting things. We've got uh, child and baby dummies as well and pregnant women. So that the skill centre opened up in um, September this year. So our first years are the first ones to be really using it. Uh, other research, we'll look at a bit more as we go through this presentation, but please research your university because you're going to be spending three years there. So you need to make sure that you are a good fit. And Natalie will let you know, we've got details of tours of uh, Stonex available. And also we have an open day coming up in February. So please make sure you spend your time researching your university. Next one, there we go. before the interview, these are the bits you must know. This is the, the essential guide. Obviously UCAS application, and I'm sure those of you who've uh, college and schools have got help with your UCAS application and writing personal statements, please do be assured we do read your personal statement 
and uh, the panel always read it again before your interview. So there may be specific things in there that they want to explore with you that you've talked about. There may be things that you'd like to to highlight as well from your personal statement. And there's nothing wrong with that in your interview. You can say, you know, in my personal statement, I said this, and you can fatten that up in your interview, tell us more about it, give us more detail. So your UCAS application is your foot in the door and they, everyone is looked at and shortlisted. So please make sure, you know, all your qualifications are on there, all your work experience. If you've got any job at all, it doesn't matter whether it's healthcare related, it's all interesting and useful any voluntary work you've done, include all this because it gives us a really well-rounded view of you as an applicant. So it might be that there are things that, you know, we can pull out from your application that we find particularly interesting. That means we'd like to know more about you. So uh, these are the entry requirements for Middlesex University. So for nursing, we asked for 112 tariff, tariff points and that's a uh, distinction merit merit at BTEC or BBC in A levels and access we ask for the equivalent of 112 from your units within your access course. Midwifery is slightly higher so we're looking at 120 to 128 there. Again A levels, BBB, BTEC distinction, distinction merit and access course equivalent to 120 to 128. We also accept key skills, functional skills at level two for nursing and midwifery However, if you've got pending GCSEs and you won't get your results until August, we won't be shortlisting you. And that's because we need our numbers done before clearing. So um, for some people, they've got maths and English pending, but they might have got another maths and English qualification that we could consider. So anything like that, just get in touch and we can advise you further on that. If you're successful, at shortlisting, then obviously the next stage will be your interview. Uh, again, when we're talking about your preparation, these are the trusts that we are linked with. Uh, this is where our placements are. We organise your placements for you. We sort them out. We allocate you to a particular trust or um, uh, community area, depending on whether you're doing adult mental health or child. We try to make sure you remain within that trust for your placements, but for some things that are specialist, we might have to arrange for you to go to a different one. So for example, some of our theatre placements might be with our private providers like um, the BMI hospitals, um, obviously the community trusts as well, we work with. So what we need to do by the end of your three years is to show that you've done 2,300 hours of clinical practice but with a variety of settings. So you don't just go to one area, you have a whole variety of different settings within your three years. And um, you're assessed in your placements, you have to pass your placements to uh, complete your, your programme and you're assessed in your placements by our, our partners, our registered nurses within those trusts and midwives. So it's quite a difficult slide to read that, but um, the main trusts that we link with are uh, the Royal Free, which is at Belsize Park, the Whittington Archway, Barn, Enfield and Haringey and Camden and Islington are mental health trusts. We have the North Mid and Barn and Chase Farm Hospitals. We also have Marie Curie Hospice and um, Stammer Orthopaedic Hospital as, as well as Moorfields Eye Hospital. So we allocate you, we try and allocate you based on your postcode and your transport because obviously we were aware that we don't want you traveling a long way. Please note that when you're looking at a university and you're looking at the trusts that they're linked to, you're gonna to have to be there at seven o'clock in the morning some morning. So please think about your travel and your other commitments if you've got family commitments, because uh, you know getting to the university for nine o'clock in the morning is not a problem. Getting to your placement for seven o'clock in the morning could be an issue. So please you know, investigate that thoroughly as much as anything else. Next slide, please. So what are we looking for when we interview you? And, and the first thing I'd say to you is, is interviews a strange word, but it's more of a conversation. We want to talk to you. It's not about firing questions at you and expecting you to get them right or wrong. It's about asking you questions that, that are exploring you and your knowledge. So when someone asks you an interview question, think about what you'd like to know, what you'd like them to know about you. So it's not about right or wrong. It's about the opportunity for you to present yourself and, and give us the information that you would like us to have about you. So 
these are some of the areas that we, we explore during your interview. Obviously, as I've already said, knowledge and awareness of midwifery or your chosen field of nursing. So you really need to have that clear because the, the what we don't want is you starting your course and then six months down the line thinking, I don't like this. This is what I thought it was going to be because that's a place that we can't then give to somebody else. So, you know, we need to make sure that the people that start on the programme really know what they're doing, have really made this choice that this is the career that they want. Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Excuse me a minute. Anyway. Oh, oh so sorry. So, um, we'll give you some links to help you with your, your research into uh, nursing and midwifery, just to make sure that you're really clear on it. It may be that you've got members of your family who are nurses, members of your family who are midwives, uh, spend some time talking to them. We, we are not expecting you to have clinical experience. We know how difficult it is, particularly during, because of COVID, it's very difficult to get into hospitals to get experience, but there's plenty of virtual ways you can explore nursing and midwifery before your interview. It's really worthwhile having awareness of contemporary issues in the NHS. So for example, if you're coming along for an interview for children's nursing, think about what some of the issues could be for children in London. You know, we know that COVID's had a massive effect on our children, but you know, with things like socialization for teenagers who were isolated, some of you might have felt that with having to study at home on your own and not have your friends around you. We're not sure yet how these things are going to play out. We're not sure about long COVID in children. So keep an eye on what's going on around public health. Um, <laughs> we, we're concerned now that there might well be a backlash against vaccinations. So some countries have seen things like polio and measles reappearing, which we all thought had gone. So, you know, those things are going to affect the type of patients you're nursing, the type of work you're going to be doing as a nurse. <laughs> Pardon me. So the other thing we want to be aware of is you've thought about what it's going to mean to you to be a student nurse or student midwife. It is stressful, but what does that mean to you? How is that stress going to affect you? How are you going to manage that in your life? We can't take away the types of things that you're going to be experiencing. Uh, for those of you who are thinking about midwifery, you will witness situations that are very painful where perhaps women lose their uh, baby, this could be a stillborn, it could be a miscarriage, or you could well have women who don't want to be pregnant, who, who you know, just it's not what they wanted. Um, they're not happy about being pregnant. It's not always a joyous event for everybody. So there's gonna be things that challenge the way you think about things and, and the things that, that are important to you in your life. I'm sure you, you've all got ways of dealing with stress and, and um, Nope. Um, sorry, me did, you, did you want me to move off? Oh, sorry. No, no, back, please. Sorry, Carol. Oh, there, there we go. So, yes, yeah, so to have a think about, you know, what sort of things do you do to manage the stress in your life at the moment? Because we all have it. Um, and um, there will be days that, you know, that you're going to be stretched and you're going to be considering your career options, it's probably the best way to say it. So think about your coping strategies. Um, personal awareness, empathy and caring, well, we'll explore that with you, but uh, the fact that you've applied for these type of programmes shows that that's the sort of person that you are. But have you got examples of, of caring and uh, personal awareness? We also expect you to be non-judgmental and um, we will expect you to have some cultural awareness as well, because obviously London's very exciting, vibrant, um, diverse community and you will be working with people throughout that so again we would expect to see evidence of that in your responses we've put experience of working with others because this takes me back to the point i had about getting work in um, clinical settings which is you know really difficult to do but you've all got experience of working with other people you've all got experiences of managing yourself working as part of a team Sometimes those teams don't work particularly well. Sometimes they work really well, but this is all valuable experience that you can bring along to your interview. If you've got examples of things, that's very, very useful as well. Thanks, Natalie. So some of this we've talked a bit about already, but you know, one of the things we really want to know about is why, why have you decided to study to be a nurse or a midwife? 
What is it about it? So it's a bit of the history. This again could be things that are in your personal statement that you might want to fatten up a bit. You might want to tell us a bit more about it. Um, again, research. We've talked a bit about why you want to be it, but you know, again, look at it's nursing is an academic subject. Midwifery is an academic subject. It's an evidence-based subject. If you get a chance to have a look at some journals, have a look at some of the work that's going on in nursing and midwifery, you'll find that really interesting. Lots of things like the nursing standard um, or, or the practicing midwife talk about the experiences of, of the students um, in that area as well. So you might well find that useful too. And also, as we know, the political landscape at the moment is quite turbulent. Nurses on strike. Um, we haven't yet heard where the midwives are going to go on strike, but there's lots of changes going on within the NHS always worth being aware of what what those mean to you as a student at the moment students aren't on strike but uh, the universities are supporting them when our, our colleagues are, are not at work next one please so transferable skills we've mentioned already and you've all got transferable skills so you've developed these through your work through your work experience through your life you might have got been volunteering um, some people have been um, working with with uh, in their schools with other children so think about these because these are the things that we will develop with you as a student and these are things that are really key if you are going to be a nurse or a midwife delegation is a very interesting one because delegation is not an easy thing to do telling other people what to do is not easy asking other people to help you with things can work better sometimes but you know if you've done a team project trying to divvy up the tasks between you sometimes when everyone wants to do one thing and nobody wants to do another that's difficult delegation is a key aspect of your role listening which we've put before communication because because people are very good at listening to respond but not listening to understand and that's a big difference so if you're listening to somebody because you're trying to understand what they're saying to you that's a key skill. If you're listening, but you're waiting to get your point in, that's that's not quite so good. So communication, uh, and that's you know, verbal and non-verbal. How do you communicate with people? How do you communicate in times of stress and anxiety? How do you help people when they're upset or frightened or vulnerable? An analytical approach is really useful because uh, big part of your job as a nurse or a midwife will be decision making. So you'll be making decisions based on the information you have in front of you. So that information could be your academic knowledge from your studies, your clinical knowledge from working in a particular setting, your experience, but all these will come together to help you with your decision making. So it could be decision making about a particular uh, method of pain control, about a method of approaching a, a patient or client, it could be about a wound care, but your entire career will be about analytical decision making. And again, obviously, that brings in your research. Research will be a big part of your three year degree and um, looking for the evidence to support your arguments and your decisions. So you're already doing research as, as, as students. You have to be able to research to be able to do what you do. But we will obviously build on that. And most nurses that you will meet and midwives will either be about to study in the middle of studying or just finish some study. So you never stop learning and developing as a, as a nurse or midwife. Leadership is an interesting one because leadership is, is for all of us. Everyone looks to people for leadership at, at different times and in different ways. And again, as a student nurse, you'll find that um, as, you, as you progress through your program, then you find yourself supporting uh, more junior nurses and midwives who'll come to you and ask you questions and you find that your leadership skills start to develop through that you may find that you know again an example of group work that you are someone who's comfortable taking the lead in that or you may not be there's nothing wrong with not wanting to be a leader but wanting to you know sit back listen help decision making support other people thinking about how your role sits within a team Motivation, and sometimes that can be very difficult when it's six o'clock in the morning and it's cold and you've got to get up and go and do a shift. But what is your motivation? What is it that gets you going? Why is it that you want to do this? What motivates you? Um, it could be that, that you want to have a career, which, you know, nursing and midwifery careers are fantastic. 
always different, always exciting, never dull. So many opportunities to develop your skills and knowledge. Time management, unfortunately, is really, really important. And I'm sure you're all aware of the need to be able to manage your time properly, particularly when it comes to things like deadlines, punctuality. Uh, you could be one of those people that likes to be everywhere half an hour early and have all your work done a week early. Otherwise you get really stressed or it may be that you know that your motivation is that it's due in tomorrow and that you have to get it done. So the big part of time management is your awareness of how you manage your time and how you allocate time to it. And when I used to, I used to be the program leader for the, for the degree program for nurses. And people used to say, right, I've got a day off tomorrow and I'm gonna spend all day working on my, my assignment. But actually that's really not gonna work. You know, what you need to do is give yourself some time off. Say, I'm gonna spend two hours doing this and then I'm going to do something else. So it's a sort of reward system often works quite well. Uh, and priorities, again, this isn't just about prioritizing your work, prioritizing your program, it's about prioritizing you and your family life and your life outside. You can't give your all to a career without having some life as well. So priorities are, it might be that, you know, this weekend you have to get this assignment finished, but you know, once that's done, then you can have some downtime and you can do other things. So you all have these amazing transferable skills. Think about them, think about them in your life and how you develop them, how you manage them, how perhaps sometimes you ignore them, but can you tell us about them a bit in your interview? Next, please. Natalie, what's this one? Oh, it's you've got it's the, the video. The... Do you want me to quickly show the video? Yeah, show the video. Mm -hmm. In this video, we'll look at how you can become the most prepared for your interviews. There are a variety of interview types that you might be asked to attend. In this video, we'll look at the panel and multiple mini interviews. Firstly, what's the difference? Panel interview. You'll meet several representatives who work in different roles. They'll ask you a number of questions related to your field of study. You'll meet clinical staff, academic staff, and service users. For multi-mini interviews, you'll likely have six to eight stations, which represent the different competencies you need to meet in order to be a successful nurse or midwife. Given a different scenario per station and a time limit, and you'll need to work your way through each area, answering a question or undertaking an activity. We want to help you as much as possible. Let's go through the sorts of things you could be asked during both these interviews.
Caroline? Oh, well, hopefully that was, was useful for you. Um, you <clears throat> Did you want to talk about the booklet slightly there? Um, that when you apply to Middlesex University, you will get a similar booklet to this sent to you, specifically with questions in there that we will ask at interview, and we'll talk about that as, as you go through, won't you, Caroline? Yeah. Yeah. That one there is just as a guide. Yeah, so um, next slide. Yeah. So this year um, for nursing at Middlesex, we have asked you to prepare three of the questions in advance, just so that you come knowing some of the things we're going to be asking you, that you have a confidence from knowing that, that you've got questions already prepared. And the booklet that we send out helps you with um, some of your preparation for your interview. So well, the first question we're going to ask you to think about is, what do you think are the most important personal and professional qualities that a nurse should have? And again, you know, we're talking about the six C's of nursing here. And we may ask you to tell us which you think are the most important of these. And uh, anyone that's working within healthcare or social care knows that these are really underpinning everything we do as nurses and midwives. So familiarise yourself with this. We're not expecting you to recite these things, but, you know, you may have views about which you think are the most important of the six C's. And if you've got experience of anything, it doesn't have to be in a healthcare setting that you could use as an example to support why you've identified one of them as particularly important to you. So that's one question that we're going to ask you to prepare in advance before you come to your interview. The next one. So again, well, this is the NHS constitution and this underpins everything we do as nurses and midwives. So again, it's worth making sure you understand the NHS constitution and have a look at what it means and uh, why it's important. So the first thing, obviously, in the constitution is working together for patients. So our patients are really important. They're the first thing that we have to think about because everything we do is about caring for our patients, supporting our patients, looking after our patients. And within that is respect and dignity and that's patients and their families, but also your colleagues. So how do we make sure that we have a respectful environment to work in where everyone has a voice? We understand people's life choices. We understand uh, how people work together in teams. Really important part of, of what we do as a team. Quality of care. So it's not enough just to look after people. We have to make sure they get quality of care. And again, that, that's where the evidence and the research comes in, that we make sure we're giving the best possible care backed up by evidence and knowledge and that makes sure that patients are nursed safely and effectively and that therefore from that they'll have a positive patient experience 
compassion you know we need to make sure that that's key to what we do we have to treat people with humanity and kindness the nhs should be about making people's lives better so it's not just about treating people it's about preventing illness it's about public health it's about maintaining health so people who've got long-term diagnoses so that could be children with with chronic diseases it could be mental health clients with a diagnosis it could be women who have an existing diagnosis who are now pregnant that diagnosis doesn't make them ill they can live a healthy life for example things like diabetes that doesn't it's not an illness it's it means you have some changes to your lifestyle but it means you can be healthy but if that's not managed and monitored then obviously you can become poorly from it and everyone counts that's from looking at resources looking at the whole community and that we don't exclude or discriminate anybody or leave anyone behind next one please so the next question which is you know we've again we've talked about this earlier on that we've all going to ask you to prepare um, is is what does a registered nurse do so you need to think about are you applying for adult uh, mental health nursing or children and young people's nursing what what do they do so think about you as a nurse what will you be doing what are we going to teach you to do that you can't do now what will be your responsibilities uh, again relate it back to transferable skills how will those transfer to you as a nurse in practice who will you work with what kind of tasks are you going to be carrying out uh, if you've had a chance to watch anything like uh 24 hours in A&E, it's quite reflective. There was a very good series of programmes called Hospital, which the BBC did in conjunction with the Open University. And that was actually filmed at the Royal Free during COVID. Um, and they give uh, really useful insights into what nurses do. Uh, also, if you look on YouTube, lots of people have put about, they give a view of their day as a nurse or a midwife. So, that gives you an insight to types of things you're going to be doing. And again, this comes down to why have you decided to study to become a nurse or midwife? Because if you don't know what they do, then why would you want to be one? So please make sure you really do understand some of the things you're going to be involved in. The NHS careers website, again, people talk about what they do during their day. So it could be uh, children's nurses working in the community with, with children in their own homes. How do they work with them? It could be about mental health nursing, it could be about the role of the midwife in the community and um, in, in a hospital setting. OK, so again, these are just for nursing. The midwives don't have this as part of their interview. Next one, please. And this is this is something that's really important in healthcare and possibly most jobs. But the other question we'd like you to prepare is about being part of a team. So what's good about being part of a team, but what can be some of the challenges? And again, you can bring in any examples that you have uh, to show your understanding of teamwork, your role in it, your understanding of, of um, what's needed to be a successful team, how you might have managed a situation. You might have been involved in a project where, you know, you've got two or three people who aren't contributing. How do you manage that? That's a really tough one when you, you want to get it done, you want to get it submitted and you're trying to drag other people along with you. How would you manage that? It's always a good example. Next one, please. So we might ask you to think about other things as well. So how do you prioritize your workload? How do you manage your time? Are you good at organizing? Are you good at organizing others? Are you good at organizing yourself? We will obviously be assessing your, if your communication. Now, please don't think that we don't understand how nerve wracking it is. We know you're nervous. You don't need to tell us but we will try all we can to put you at ease and get the most from you. So if you're struggling, we might well ask the question in a different way or perhaps focus on something in your personal statement and ask you to explore that. So we will try to help you. Don't worry if you're nervous, everybody is. We're not trying to catch you out. We're not trying to ask you difficult questions to trip you up. We're trying to get the best out of you. We want you to talk to us. So don't come to an interview thinking we're looking for ways to get rid of you because we're not. We're looking at ways to, to bring you on. We want you. You know, we want to make you an offer, we want you in our university. So work with us, it's a partnership. Uh, we may look at other things around diversity because obviously we need to make sure we treat people equally and fairly as students, but also as uh, users of healthcare services. Your ability to be reflective about your own experience and to talk to us about your skills and how relevant it is to being a student. 
Uh, some of you will talk about other jobs that you've had, about volunteering you've had, all useful, all valid. Um, you know, the more we know about you, the better. And also you need to think about the more emotive situations. It's not going to be lovely. People will die, children will die. Um, you know, people will get upset, people will be stressed. Uh, people will make decisions that you might not necessarily agree with, but you have to support your patients and, and also advocate for your patients in some cases. So they might decide to stop treatment or they might decide they don't want a particular treatment. Again, it's our role to support and, and, and work with, with patients in those situations. Next one, please. So you might want to ask us questions. You don't have to ask us questions. Some people feel that they haven't done an interview unless they ask us something. Don't ask questions because you think you have to. Ask questions because you want to know the answer to them. But also don't ask questions that you can get the information somewhere else. So, because that shows you haven't really prepared. So somebody asked me the other day where, where Middlesex University was, which worried me slightly because I thought, well, surely you should have looked at where we are. We're in Hendon, in case you don't know that. Um, so you might ask why, why you should you choose to study at Middlesex? And that's good because you're going to ask us, what are we offering you as a student? Because it's your decision as much as ours. You know, if you've got, if you get five offers, then you have to decide where you want to study. So if we can help you with that decision, that's fine. How can you ensure you're successful? Again, a useful question. And we might well be able to offer you some tips from that. Support. Middlesex is a very supportive university, but the, the, the key part of that question is specific. So the support is there, but it's about what support you need at what time. And we have lots of specific support available to you, but it might be that you're anxious about numeracy or it might be anxious about formatting your essays. Some people um, this week have raised the fact they're a bit, bit anxious about their IT skills, which I don't think ever goes away. We all, we're all anxious about our IT skills. And also about preparing for your programme. These are all useful and valid questions. But, you know, if you've got something specific you want to ask us, you might have seen the details of our modules on the website. And you know, there's one that you find particularly interesting. Again, ask us that question. You know, we are nurses, we're academics, we can help if we can. If not, then, um, you know, we might be able to direct you somewhere where they could give you a bit more specific information. Next one, please. So this. Um, as, as Natalie said, these are all going to come out to you. These are really useful links. So there's our YouTube. Um, there's, there's the video of our skills lab, which is fairly incredible. Um, and uh, obviously our website, lots of information on our website as well to help you with your application process. Mm -hmm. um, Caroline, I'm just showing you on that. Um, and then there's obviously the, the website, there's lots of information on there, Caroline, um, especially virtual work experience that anybody can sign up to um, do that now if they haven't got any to give them a bit more insight, really. There's lots of useful links. This, yeah. this recording will be shared with you um, on Monday next week when we create the playlist. OK, so don't worry about writing all those down because obviously it, it's going to be coming out to you. Um, did you want to move on to questions yeah. now? Can I just, let me just oh. answer this question. Oh, yes. Sorry. We've got an open day on Saturday, the 25th of February, 2023. If you want to come up, um, all information can be found on the link there, which is www.mdx.ac.uk stroke events. Or if you want to see our fantastic new skills labs, we've got um, tours to there, to StoneX on Thursday, the 19th of January 2023. Again, if you go to our website, um, www.mdx.ace.uk stroke campus tours, you can book to see that the um, our Stone X that is on Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, and they will run only monthly, but that's specifically just to see Stone X that tour. So it could be a good chance for you if you're around on Thursday to book onto that to come up to see us. And now I'm going to go on to the questions. Is that okay? Yeah. If, if right, we'll start. If you're a, we'll start at the top. If you're a mature student who has done A levels already, do you need to do biology A level before applying to midwifery? No. Not with Middlesex, but no. you need to check each university. Um, 
Uh, can you can you hear us when we speak? Can you see us or just so we can only hear and see you guys? No, yeah, we, we can't hear you. No, you just have to use the Q&A function, which is, I did say that at the start. And um, I have a pending maths GCC, but I've got a grade three already. Um, other GCSEs are fine. Do, do, any, do you think you, any universities will still take me for children's nursing? You'd have to contact the universities. I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're currently, um, you may have, I don't know if you, if you've already sat it, then you'll get your results in January. But if you're still pending, what I would say to you is if you're currently at school or college, go and see your um, careers advisor and let them know the situation. And they may let you do the key skills because um, you get the results much earlier for that. Um, and we will then take that in lieu of the GCSE. Um, I've currently, um, I've currently to apply for my PIN as a registered nursing associate. Can I still apply for this course? As yeah, a absolutely. Registered nursing associate. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Okay. Um, but it might be worth seeing if anyone's doing a top-up degree for associates because that'll be quicker. Because mm. um, uh, we, it doesn't, you don't see which field you are, but um, for some universities, and we have been able to do this, we can offer you year two entry but we can only offer that for adult this year. We can't offer it for child or mental health. Okay, so yes, definitely worth um, looking at that. Yeah. Um, this year I'm doing my level five BTEC in healthcare practice after this course. I want to continue in nursing. I may have three years or I may have three years or two. If it's only a level five, it's only a BTEC, then you've got to do three years. If you've yeah, already because, got a degree, uh, isn't it? Yeah, the, pro the, the problem with that, that is you haven't got your placement hours, which have to be assessed according to the NMC standards, so yeah. it would be a three-year programme. Yeah. Thank you. I cannot hear the audio, please. Can you hear it now? Hope so. Um, Expand on your explanation of work placement expressions. What are the usual shifts? Well, As a that's, that, uh, you're not saying which field you are. Um, it depends on the trust, it depends on the placement areas. Some placement areas do long days, they do three long days a week, which are normally, I think, 7.30 to 7.30. Others do short shifts, which tend to be seven till three, and then a late shift and a night shift. So, it, you know, if you're in the community, it can be eight till four. So it's a variety of different times, depending on uh, your placement. Uh, placements with us are normally in blocks of four to six weeks, and you usually do about 14 to 16 weeks a year. Um, next question is um, a question relevant to interviews. How how can we respond to scenarios we have have to answer? Any tips? Oh, we don't use scenarios, so uh, no. But you, you um, yeah, I would just um, research that on um, if you look on YouTube and um, on people's websites who do, then you should be able to that should you should be able to find some answers for that. How does this international grades apply from Sweden? Well, we'd look at your equivalencies. So um, anyone who's got international qualifications, we'd ask you to do a NARIC comparison. That's NARIC, N-A-R-I-C. Go on their website and ask for a NARIC comparison. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular A-level subjects you would prefer? No. No, you just look at the points. Um, is there a way to get hold of the resources you mentioned that are coming out next Monday earlier? If our interview feels well, we actually, if you go to our website, you should be able to. Um, if your interview is next week, then you will have set, been sent those questions already. Um, but if you go to our website, you'll see the Q and the um, the live stream we did for last year. Um, that is on our website now, so you can look at that for now. But we can't get it out any earlier because we've got to edit. We've got to edit it first. And um, also, you our YouTube videos as well. There's lots on there mm. to help. Yeah, you. there's lots on there. Um, as a nurse, so I'd like to study midwifery. Yes, but you'd probably have to study the full three years. So um, as long as you've got the required entry qualifications, we'd take your foundation degree as long as you've got maths and English as well. Um, um, as a mature student, I've IELTS um, exam six and MVQ level three. Do I need to attain my maths? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is, um, is IELTS six okay? No, we need IELTS of seven. So you're better off doing maths and English at level two. Yeah. Um, key skills 
functional Thank skills. I, I do two A levels and one B tech, however, you've asked for three Bs. Okay. You could combine no, it. Yeah. Yeah, we take Sorry. combinations as long as it's equivalent to 120 for midwifery. Yeah. We would take that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, hello, thank you for the webinar. Very interesting. Send us to the showcase, interact with the dummies as well. Um, it will show you, it depends. We may have students up there studying. So um, if the if the room is available, then they may be able to do that. But otherwise you they'll, you may see some demonstrations with current, because there will be current, because it is a working environment. So there are students studying there all of the time. It just depends how, how much we could disturb that group when we go there. So they will they will show the equipment as much as they yeah. can. Yeah. Um, I'm applying for midwifery and I was wondering how many times we'll be going into university. I know many of us do a lot of first year online and was wondering if that's the case at Middlesex. Um, at the moment, we are keeping, um, obviously, you know, it's, it's very difficult to predict what could be happening in September. Mm. But for safety's sake, we've kept the um, big lectures online. Mm -hmm. So the university is fully open, all the facilities are open, small group teaching skills, teaching one-to-one -one tutorials are all on campus, but big lectures, rather than putting everybody in a big lecture theatre together, we've kept those online, but they are live, so you will attend them as if you were attending a lecture and you can interact with them as well. Okay. So do you know, how many of those, do you know how many you have of those, Caroline? No, not, not for, for no. midwifery, but no. you, normally, um, for uh, theory, you're normally only in two or three times a week at the most. Okay. But again, if you come to an open day, um, you will be able to see current students as well. Um, yeah. And you can talk to them about how they're studying at the moment. Yep. Um, after the 25th June, can you apply to get into university? Um, yeah, yeah, we think all our, our courses will still be open after the yeah. 25th. So. Yeah, it just, it just depends really, but we are open. As long as we're open, you can apply. Yeah, absolutely. You have a degree in health and social care and also a BTEC level three. Do I have to start from first or second year? Again, that would be a first year because you need um, clinically assessed placements and uh, they have to meet the NMC standards. Could they do the PG dip? Or the accelerated programme? We haven't got an adult PG dip. We've only got mental health. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. But again, I would research that, would you, Caroline? Yeah, absolutely. In yeah, general. look at other universities that do a, a short mm. programme for people who've got a first degree. Yeah. Um, okay. I've applied for adult nursing BSc. Are there any approaches you have taken as a university to hold towards inviting or attracting a large amount of male nurses since the number of female nurses outweigh males? Uh, no, we haven't. We've, we've taken part in the debate about this. Mm. Um, and uh, it's very interesting because our mental health cohort is predominantly male. Mm. We have the occasional midwife who's male. We do have a fair few adult nurses who are male, but um, as a university, no, we haven't. As an organisation, we've contributed to the ongoing debate around uh, attracting more men into nursing. And obviously, you know, we'd be very interested on your point of view as to why you decided you'd like to be a nurse thank you what if you don't have any a-levels um at all and i barely have any grades to hold a foundation um i'd be saying to the person that says that they've um they they don't have any a-levels or it looks like they don't got any level three qualifications you need to contact your local college um, and enrol yourself on an access course along with your level your level twos in English and maths. Yeah, don't worry. We have lots of students who come through that route mm -hmm. um, who use access courses. So don't think you've missed the boat in any way at all. We, we're happy for students to come along with an access course. Mm -hmm. What's um, the deadline for you? Well, um, it depends on the programme. Um, yeah. But obviously we would strongly advise anyone to get their application in as soon as possible. How many words would do we do from how would we go about the essay writing and how many words would we do for midwifery? We we don't if, if you're talking about this as part of the recruitment process, we don't have an essay as part no. of our recruitment. You have many, essays in your program and they're often yeah. around fifteen hundred to, to three thousand words. How many students do we take for child nursing and midwifery? 
Uh, we usually take around 80 for each. Thank you. Um, I've done um, BSc Microbiology in India and passed in 2014 with with English degree. I've been training here in 2021 and working in King's. It's about three now. I'm choosing adult nursing, but I've so it would be helpful. I need to do the PhD. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to answer that? Come around. Uh, BSc in 2014. We wouldn't consider that because it's too old. It's more than five years old. Mm. Um, but they want to do adult nursing. Yeah, um, um, I would talk, if you're at King's, I'd talk to King's about doing a PG dip because they do it. Yeah. So you yeah. need to find a PG dip programme because you've already got a degree, but we wouldn't consider your degree as it is too old. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I've been booked for an interview while having a Nigerian... Do I need to do a NARIC to... Um, it won't it won't affect your interview, but it might affect your uh, offer. So the offer may ask you to uh, get NARIC equivalencies and upload your results because we need everyone's exam results uploaded onto their portal once they get an offer. So our admissions team will advise you about what it is they're they're looking for. Thank you. I do have a level one, a level one, two, 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 two three, three, and how much can level one in general? I do not have much. I would say um, you need to, if you're at college at the moment, I would go and speak to them about doing your level two in um, literacy and numeracy, functional yes. skills. You should be able to get yourself onto those if you don't have those already. Um, and they, as long as you've got a level three qualification that meets the UCAS tariff, then that should be okay. But if not, huh. then ask the, co the college will be able to advise you what, what qualifications to do, usually an access course. But they will be able to help you with all of that, the college. Yeah, yeah. They're the aware of what the, to where you live. They're aware of the university entry requirements. Mm -hmm. I'm doing BTEC Health Social Care Level 3. Is it useful to do it in a variety of places or just specific placement related to the course? Well, it's always useful to get a, a variety of experience. Always useful. Um, mm -hmm. It depends what they can offer you. So it's about what you get from it. Yeah. And it depends so, on the college. The yeah. college may only have placements at I don't know the local care home where they live, where they based. If you're at college and that's how you got the placement, they may not be able to change that. If our application is unsuccessful and we go through clearing in the summer, would you still would you look at the same student? No, if you were already unsuccessful in that cycle, then we we wouldn't consider you again. Mm -hmm. um, but other universities would. Yeah, we may consider you for a different course, not in yeah. nursing, if you wanted to do business or something like that, but not the same programme. Mm -hmm. I have an access to our education grades from 2010. Do I need to renew them? Yeah, they're too old. They're more than five years old. We'd need yeah. access within the last five years. Also, maybe um, take, take your maths, we could take your maths and English from there, yeah. but you'd need, you'd need a new access. Yeah, but um, also um, think about what you've been doing since 2010. They may ask you that question if you did your access mm. course then as well. That's quite a long time ago. Um, if I get a BBC... As long as you meet the UCAS tariff, then yes, you will be. Yeah. Um, and you and you get for interview and you've got everything else, you're able to... to um, you, mm. you, you should be able to get an offer. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. If I get... Oh, we've done that one. Hang on. As someone who's planning to do midwifery, how many days do I go to university and how many days are you on placement? When you're out on placement with midwifery, the midwifery students start their placements early. So they start in November mm -hmm. and you do 37 and a half hours a week. So that's full time, yeah. either five days of short shifts a week or three long days a week. Uh, when you're in university, it's usually only two to three days a week. Some weeks you might have another. Uh, another day when we do things like mandatory training with you, um, such as CPR or moving and handling, which you have to have before you go out into clinical practice, but it's usually no more than two or three days. Yeah, but when they're on placement, they're on placement usually all the time, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, you don't you do not do a day in university mm -hmm. and a day in placement, yeah. you do it in blocks of, of four to six weeks normally. Um, is that what you asked for physiology and not? I'm doing health and social care. Now, as long as it, it's the whole BTEC and you're going to get the uh, distinction, distinction, merit or distinction, merit, merit, and you've got your English and maths and you meet the entry requirements, then we will consider your application. 
isn't it? Yeah, uh, but also, mm. you know, if you're going to spend some time looking at anatomy and physiology, that's going to be nothing but helpful for you. Mm. You know, that's it's going to underpin everything you do. So, you know, please make sure you you um, if you feel that's an area where you need to do some work, then you know, there's lot again, lots of YouTube videos about mass about mass about anatomy and physiology. So, you know, just spend some time if you want to preparing for that before you start. Okay. Um, so um, if if they've made five applications and are unsuccessful, other units should still accept you. Um, yeah, you, you can go through extra and then into clearing. Yeah, but, but before you get to that point, I would say on that, I would say that um, start to find out why you've been unsuccessful to see if you yeah. can put it right before your five applications come in. Yeah, but I can't tell you how many people don't ask for feedback if they're unsuccessful. Mm. Um, and we we're always happy to provide feedback if you were unsuccessful at interview. You can contact admissions and they will uh, let you know, either contact me or, or the team that interviewed you. We're always happy to provide feedback. But if you find it, like Natalie said, you've got five unsuccessful, you really need, do need to find out what's going on. Um, somebody's not at college. Um, and the, are, are we... Are you saying, Caroline, that they need to get their maths qualification before applying to the university? No, no. Or as long as it's, you will need to get it by the end of end of July. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you can apply with it pending as a, as a functional skills or um, key skills, but um, if you haven't got it by the end of July, then you, you we might well reject you. Mm -hmm. Are interviews are in person or online this year? No, no, they're still online at the moment because mm -hmm. we're still concerned about covid numbers yeah. but i think i think it's flexible for the students as well especially if yeah, they're coming yeah. from far away um how long is the school year in weeks 40 so it's a 40 about a 45 week year because mm. yes, you've got your placement long. weeks so it's quite long um my higher education grades are old but i have my gcse's and a levels um are they too old to get in we would take your GCSE maths and English, but you'd need to have your level three, um, your, your A-level equivalents within the last five years. Mm -hmm. If the maths results in the summer come out in August, as I have not passed maths yet, and I have to, I have to meet the conditions. It, yeah, the um, GCSE results come out, I think it's the 23rd or 24th yeah, it's of two, August. It's, two it's two the week after A-levels. Um, are they saying they've already got a conditional offer on that? Um, I'm not sure. Um, what I would say is suggest if you contact the, um, the admissions office, they will definitely be able to answer that question for you. Yeah, so drop us an email <clears throat> and we'll look into that. But um, just to say as well, if you go onto our web pages, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see me. And it's not a live chat, but if you put a question in there, then I will come back to you. Mm -hmm. I'm flying via Newcastle. There is a criteria it's saying I've, if I've done any course in the last five years in medical, so it's relevant for their diagnosis course, I could apply for it. My my degree in 2014, please. If that's your last study, that's too old. We need mm. something within the last five years, please. Um, no, I don't yet. Um, I'm assuming this person was one of. Yeah, she's, she said, okay, we thank you for the time. And the same here, okay. Um, yeah, none of our nursing courses course start in January. All, no. all our nursing programmes start in September. And we don't give unconditional offers. No, because everybody's going to have to have a... There will be a condition based on DBS and occupational health as well as um, an, um, as a qualification. Yeah, so they're so we all conditional anyway, aren't they? Yeah, we don't, we don't give unconditional offers to anybody. No. So. Because you, because you can't, because there's other conditions to meet yeah. along. But for that. people who've got their, who've got their qualifications already, um, then we will, we will confirm your, your place. Mm. We'll make you unconditional early, but that's mm -hmm. only once we start doing all other processes. If, if you're an international student, then I would suggest you contact one of the international office. Um, if you go to the international office webpage, um, they will be able to help you with applying to university. But we don't accept international students for nursing or midwifery. Other yeah. universities do, but um, we don't. So, you know, if you want to come to the university, then you might want to look at another course uh, rather than nursing or midwifery. Yeah. 
that's all the questions all done. we have. Oh, thank you all yeah. very much. Thank you for coming. Oh, oh there's, there's one another more. one. There's another one. One minute. What time are we on? Oh, what would make you reject a candidate because of their interview? Because they haven't prepared. Because they haven't prepared and um, not able to answer the questions. But if anyone's had an interview and wants feedback, as I said, I can give you specific feedback. Right. This is the last okay. question. I'm going to be um, ending it in a second. When will we find out if we have a place at the interview? If... Oh, we, we oh, decisions are coming up very quickly at the moment. They're coming out within about uh, within five days at least. So you do get a response very quickly from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if you want to meet Caroline or any of the team, um, the next open day is on Saturday, the 25th of February. Or we have, if you want to see the facilities up at Stone X, we've got campus tours on Thursday, 19th of January. And all information is on those web links that I've just, that are up on the screen right now. So thanks for joining us this evening. Oh, hang on. There's one more question. We, we oh. don't give out application forms. You have to apply through UCAS. Everybody applies through UCAS for a full-time UK, if you're a full-time UK student for this course. Um, and now I'm going to end. Thank you. Thank you everyone for Thank coming. I hope it's been useful. Come in. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. Bye.